One of the House members who remains undecided, however, is Pennsylvania's Jason Altmaier, and he joins us now. Congressman, 14 months. We still undecided. Why? I voted no on the House bill, and if they put that bill in front of me again, I'll vote no again. I haven't seen the final language. I don't think I'm asking too much that I want to actually read the bill and see the CBO score and hear from my constituents before I make my decision. All right. Well, have you not heard from your constituents at this point? A lot of polls show, especially on the abortion issue, they are against this bill big time. We have. It definitely takes a tilt in opposition to the bill. I take that very seriously. That's my top concern. I have some personal policy disagreements with the approach that they've taken in the previous versions of this bill. I'm going to give them a chance to rectify that in the reconciliation package, but I haven't seen the language. So I'm going to wait, right. allow my constituents to continue to weigh in and review the bill when we get it. All right. Now, we know that we know a lot of what's in the bill because of the reconciliation process. They, they've got to pretty much stick with the Senate bill. Before before I get to the specifics of that, let me let me ask you just yes or no questions so we can sure. let the slaughter rule. Are you for it or against it? If they use that process? Absolutely. Absolutely against it. It's within the rules. I don't think it's the appropriate way to do health care. Demon pass. Same thing. We just whatever. It's, what, it's the parliament, same thing. Yeah. Parliamentary maneuvers you're against, period. For the health care bill, it's within the rules of the House. It's been used dozens of times. I just think the American people on such a significant issue need to have a clean process. We know the Cornhusker kickback remains. Are you against the Cornhusker kickback? Absolutely. I would have voted against the Senate bill on that alone if we voted in isolation. Louisiana purchase, you're against that, I assume? Yes. Exemption for Florida, Montana, the special uh, gift to uh, Chris Dodd in Connecticut? All, all of those items in isolation, yes, I'm opposed. I think that was the wrong way to do this bill. I regret the fact that the Senate did it, and I wouldn't have supported the Senate bill because of Nebraska alone, but the other ones as well. You disagree with Nancy Pelosi's statement we have to pass the bill in order to find out what's in the bill? Well, as I've said, my number one concern is that my constituents have the ability to see the bill, to read it, to weigh in. Right. I need to see what's in it before I vote for it. All right, now, we, we, we are pretty confident that they're going to deem this bill passed and then do it. We're pretty confident that's the process that's emerging. And Nancy Pelosi has said she supports it. The Cornhusker kickback, apparently the president said it's not going to remain in an interview. I don't know how he gets it out during reconciliation. How does he do that? Well, that, that fits under the reconciliation rules. That would be something that applies, and you'd be able to pull that out of the bill. And there's no way I'm voting for it if that's still in the bill. All right. So we do know certain things. We, knew, we do know that there's a half a trillion dollars in Medicare cuts. We do know that there's going to be a dramatic expansion of government, 159 new offices, agencies, and programs. We do know that this bill raises taxes, uh, payroll taxes, fines on business, etc. We do know that a lot of corrupt deals went on behind the scenes and the process is corrupt. Why then, knowing what you do know, that's still not enough information for you to say that this is, this is, not, the, this is not the way government should operate? It was enough information for me to vote no on the House bill, and a lot of the concerns you raised were my concerns as well. Again, I'm going to give them a chance to make this right. I want to review the legislative language before I make my decision, but I agree with you. If that's what they put in front of me, I'm not going to support it. Yeah, and what do you make of, for example, your colleagues? I mean, Article 1, Section 7 of the Constitution is, is pretty clear on, on how we pass a bill. I think I remember, you know, as a kid that uh, that's that's the way I was taught a bill is passed. What do you make of your party that is willing to use bribery, of my word, not yours, to, you, to corrupt the process, to say we voted for a bill and not voted for it? What does that say about the Democratic Party? I would not use those words. However, I would agree that on this health care issue, it's an inappropriate way to, to pass the bill. It is within the rules to do it this way. It's been used dozens of times by Democrat and Republican Congresses. I just think that the public already is uneasy about this process, that we're using reconciliation because the Senate lost their 60th vote. They're adding the student loan bills in, it appears. That's something that uh, the American people don't want to see on this bill. And with health care reform, the biggest policy that we've taken up in 45 years to not even have an up or down vote. I, I just don't think that makes any sense and it doesn't engender the, the confidence of the American people. Obviously, you're, according to Byron York, you're one of like five people that hasn't decided. I mean, your vote may be very crucial here. 
What have the conversations been like with the Democratic leadership? Have, have you spoken to the president? Have you spoken to the White House? I have. I've spoken to both the administration and the congressional leaders, the president as well, and, and the conversation is a continuing conversation. I'm on one of the committees of jurisdiction. I've been involved in this for the whole year and a half that this has been going on, and I want to have a bill that I can support. My goal is to bring down the cost of health care. Up to this point, I haven't been able to do that, but again, I don't think I'm asking too much that I just want to see the bill itself before I decide how I'm going to vote. Yeah, but you sound to me like of all these things Things, if the process is as we discussed and all the things that were in the Senate bill are in there, you're telling me pretty much tonight you're a no vote. Again, I think it's unfair. I'd be doing my constituents a disservice to tell them ahead of time. I've already made up my mind. I don't no, no, care no, what I you have to say. Yeah, but you, you're I'm so listening. against it, though. I mean, the, the, you're so against things that I that we know are going to be in the final version. If the package is similar to what the House bill was, and a lot of those items that you talked about are in the bill I have to vote for, I will vote against it. And, and, and what if they're exactly what was in the Senate bill? How do you feel about the Senate bill? I think the Senate bill is much better than the House, but it was fatally flawed because of the Nelson Agreement. That's why the reconciliation package is the key to my decision, because I need to see that they fix the problems that the Senate bill had. All right, now you had convinced me you were no, now you've convinced me that you're yes. I can't read you. All right, uh, Congressman, uh, I'm hoping a no vote out of you. Uh, listen, I, I, hope, I hope your constituents, if this goes into next week, I offer to take you, I offer to do a town hall with you. Would you consider mm -hmm. that if there's time to do it? I would love to do it. I think it'd be fun, and I'd love to hear what people had to say. It just okay. as a matter of when the vote is. All right. If the vote is uh, sometime in the middle of next week, maybe we can do it Monday or Tuesday. All right, Congressman. Appreciate That'd be great. You. Appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And coming up. The